Okay, so here we are. No face video on this one. Um, but not to worry, you can have a look at the uh, the Roland Sampler screen. So this video isn't about the Roland S-Range samplers. I just happen to be using one of them. This is about the obvious difference between sampling into old school samplers. And I'm not talking 8 or 12 bit, I'm talking about the 16 bit ones as well from the 80s and the 90s because they pretty much all handle the pitching. When you sample a sound, the pitch, how this, these samplers handle the pitching is very different. Note changes, right? Pitching is very different from this can make a big difference to the, the sound of your music. An important thing I want to mention as well, some people have commented, do you know where I could get sounds for my sampler? The point with these samplers is to sample your stuff into it yourself, and it's not rocket science. Don't bother multi-sampling. That's not what you really want. If you want that, you've got Contact, Halion, and all the various other soft samplers out there that will do all the multi-sampling that you want. Far better than pretty much any old school hardware sampler. The point is just sample one sound, spread it across the key, the keys, the entire span of the keys. That very simple thing, because these samplers, algorithms that treat the pitch differently from these modern samplers, this is where you get some quan, some vibe, right? So it's all about vibe as well. So anyway, I've set up this ARP Odyssey with, uh, I'm gonna sample that sound. And I've gone to the S770 channel. So there's the sample. This is a 16 bit sampler, and I've sampled it 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz. So that's the sample, and that's the original the, coming straight from the ARP. So fairly accurate. But let's try it at E. So that's the ARP. And now the Roland. Definitely something going on there, huh? That's because the hardware samplers of yesteryear treat the pitching differently. Uh, the algorithms that they use to calculate the, the pitching, because it's not time stretching. It's just doing something to make it, you know, so that when you play up and down a keyboard, it's in, it's in the right, the, the pitch is correct, right? And they worked hard at this. And, but no matter how hard they, they worked, they didn't get it exactly. So, I mean, the art original. doesn't sound exactly like the Roland. I've got prepared a couple of little baseline thingies. So let's try this here. And, it, and it, it's because, you know, I had to do that because me hitting this keyboard all the time, the microphone picks it up. Because this is a professional outfit. Uh, I'll put that in cycle. So that's the ARP original, playing the original ARP. Now we'll go to the sample. Very obvious difference, right? So I have another one. One will I use? Let's try this one. The original. And now the sample. Now you can clearly hear the difference, right? 
And when you have a, a number of samples playing from your hardware sampler, this all this pitching algorithm stuff going on is adding character that or changes depending on how you want to look at it. I prefer to see it as character, but you could look at it as just changing the sound um, from the original instrument that you sampled. And depending on the sound, the, the difference in the sound is uh, exaggerated, you know. This is a very basic sound. And then something that's a bit more syncopated. I've done nothing to the Roland uh, sample sound, it's just, you know, it's playing back exactly. No EQ, no effects or anything. Let's actually give it a little bit of, a little bit of Quan. I like Quan. I never work with stuff dry. I just do that for the videos, really, but I think I'm going to stop doing that. Because it make. I think it, all these dry sounding video demos are really boring. So really quite obvious difference there. Let's put one of the other baseline thingies back. I realise the Roland's playing a little bit louder. So let's, uh, I'll truncate that, I'll go to the partial, this is just one sound across the pit, I, I, I just don't ever multi-sample with hardware samplers, if you, like I say, if you want that, just use contact, and contact will, uh, or Hallian or a, a number of others, they'll do the pitching more accurately, but that's not what I think we want. You want this kind of vibe that you get, where when it slows the, when it changes pitch, when you're going lower, it's slowing down the sample basically, and when you go up, it's, it's speeding it up, right? And the algorithm, the, the algorithms that they use back in the day are different from the ones they use today. So.
So, there you go. It's very obvious, right? Now, I'm going to sample another sound. This one. Um, the point of this is to, just to confuse matters. You don't always notice this pitch thing uh, on every sound. In particular, you don't notice it so much with the 16-bit samplers, the, the high-quality ones. So let's just sample this sound. Okay, right. Sell on that channel. And we don't hear anything. Ah, because I've got to be here. So I sampled this in stereo because the, the sampler can sample in stereo, as does the S750 and the S760. So, right, now I also set up contact. I dropped that sample, just took it and dropped it in there. It's just some random sample I've got. Um, and here it is in contact. S770 and contact. Pretty accurate. Now, if we do the pitch thing. contact now I can barely hear any difference I, I literally don't hear any difference right the point of this one was not every sound you notice it and I, I did always kind of notice that uh, when I started using software samplers that the cordy stuff like this Always sounded very similar, or pretty much the same as what I used to get. It seemed to be like shorter sounds and like different, you know, just more basic sounds. I would really notice it, you know, particularly bass sounds, but not just bass sound, drum sounds and everything. When I was pitching drums, um, so that's actually quite a good thing in certain aspects. Now, if this Roland sampler happened to be a 12-bit or an 8-bit sampler, then this pitch thing, you would notice it instantly. It's a, I have had a few, the last one I had was a, an S612, and I noticed this like instantly. Changing the pitch gave it even more, you know, changed the character and lots and lots of character. Not always for the better, though, I have to point that out. It really depends what you're looking for. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, well, I'm going to pick up an 8-bit or a 12-bit sampler and, and go to town with that. Well, yeah, I've also tried that. And, uh, you know, multiple things coming back from a 12-bit sampler. I think it was the, Roll the uh, not the Roland, the Akai S950. Um, I had various things. I had a couple of them at one point. Uh, while I also had my Roland samplers and I didn't like it. It was okay for like maybe one bass sound or one string sound or maybe something else, maybe two things. But when I started like piling on like six, seven, eight things playing, which I would regularly do with the, the Roland S750 and 770, I could, you know, the cumulative effect of the 16-bit 44.1K uh, and some of the pitchy stuff happening with shorter sounds and a bit of chord action like this, it sounds fantastic, you know? But when it was all 12-bit stuff, eh, it started getting a bit grainy, you know? And then I'm starting to pile on the EQ, the top end, and yeah, it was okay. It was it was fine for maybe one or two tunes now and then, but not, not, a, not entire albums. And that's what I was able to do with the... This is where I think the S-Range, Roland S-Range, or any of the 16-bit samplers can shine. As you could hear with this, even today, it 
competes with what contact can do, right? So keep that in mind. This is why I still like the, the S770. I can still get high quality. I, I mean, I literally can't tell any difference between the two sounds. There is a difference going on, but the nature of the sound kind of... It's not obvious that there's a difference there. I think that's quite interesting. So, yeah, the 16-bit 44.1 samplers can actually do, you know, fit into your system today. And it's not like you're losing any quality. You can hear it You can hear it here, you know. Um, but if you want, like, grainy character, you could look at picking up, uh, to complement your system, an 8-bit or a 12-bit sampler. This little section is without me playing manually, that way you, the mic's not picking up me banging away on the keyboard. Contact. And there you go.